great search brought to you by Adafruit and DigiKey. Thank you, DigiKey. This is when Lady Ada shows you how she uses what I think is the best online component store in the world. DigiKey.com, because they stock a lot of Adafruit stuff. Um, they talk a lot of stuff in general, including yeah. the part we're going to talk about tonight, so, which is always great. So the hard part is, is how do you find all this stuff? And Lady Ada shows you every single week with the Great Search. Lady Ada, what is the Great Search this week? Okay, this week's Great Search is where you're going to learn from my mistakes because I ordered the mm. wrong part. And um, it was fine because DigiKey has a very generous return policy, so it's not a big deal. But um, wouldn't it be great to get the right part when you want to book it? And so um, in this case, I was looking for uh, the ESP32 S2 chip for my new Cutie Pie design. So let's go to the overhead and I'll show my design. Um, so this design uses a ESP32 S2 chip. And um, the chip I want is, and this is the thing about Espressive chips, especially you know if you're using their modules and chips, they have versions that have built-in flash and RAM, but they, they look the same because it's like just bonded inside the chip. And you can't necessarily know unless you buy the right part. And another thing is the part marking may not be very clear. You, you really want to use um, Espresso's part selector in the data sheet. Just make sure you're ordering the right thing. So in this case, um, this chip is the, let me get the right part number when I say it. ESP32- Do you want me to extend that? Out? No, no, no. You can yeah. stay here because then I'll, I'll, I'll show it. So this is the ESP32 S2. FN4R2. FN4 means four megabytes of internal flash. Uh, R2 means two megabytes of PS RAM. But the thing is, if you look at the chip, which, you know, I don't think I'll be able to, to have it be too legible, but if you look at the chip marking, the R2 doesn't appear. I don't know if you can see it. I mean, I can barely see these before putting it under camera. But the marking on it is uh, ESP32 S2F. And, you know, I don't see the, oh, actually I do see the N4R2, yeah, okay, sorry. So the, the top part says ESP32 S2F, and then on the next line below it, below it, like two lines down, it says n 4 R2. So that's where you would see the, the flash and RAM markings. However, when I went to order the chip, I ordered the wrong ones. Um, and if you, sorry, also as a note, if you look at the this module, because I actually had to uh, pull apart this module to get the chip, you'll see up here it says ESP32 S2 Mini 1. And then the part that says N4R2 is at the bottom here. So it's not necessarily... Like the part number is going to be split in two and any of the bonded in flash and RAM are going to be in a separate line. Okay, so you've learned that lesson from me. The next lesson is um, how do you know which one you want to get? And so let's go to the computer because I want to show you. Yeah, how do you know which one you want to get? Okay, so one thing is is that there's a lot of new expressive chips and they, the information in the chip, especially when the when that there is in, internally bonded flash and RAM, it may not be in the DigiKey search, um, especially for a new chip. So this, the S2FN4R2, again, four megabytes of flash, two megabytes of PS RAM. But if you look down here, the memory size shows the non-bonded flash and RAM. This is the stuff that's actually on chip, which is uh, 120K RAM, 320 kilobyte SRAM. So that's the memory that's in the chip, not on the wire bonded, you know, system and package um, data. So what you want to do is, I actually recommend going to the Espressif website and then under the chip, because, you know, they have so many variations now of every chip and the ESP32 S2 doesn't have nearly as many variations as the just plain ESP32, which has like a bazillion, right? They'll have every combo of flash RAM, temperature rating, but if you go to the product selector, um, you can check the family. So in this case, I want to check the ESP32 S2. And then, hold on, I think that, 
this is not yeah sorry my computer is too low resolution um just really be so down here is all the esp32 s2 variations and then let's say um i want memory so you can see here it's like some some chips have um no flash and no ps ram but let's say i'm like look i want four megabytes of flash and i want you know two megabytes of ps ram and then when i go down here i can find that this is the chip that i want to get which is the let's see okay here you go you can see it so down here you can see for the non-module version of the chip the soc version it's in mass production the part number is esp32 s2 fn4 r2 now if i wanted a mini module or like you know Waroo module um you scroll down on your computer you'll be able to oh wait yeah, i can scroll you can see um mini solo we're over let's say i um didn't want any ps ram so i turned the ps ram to zero and then you can see that there's a different version and this is the version i bought by accident the esp32 s2 fh4 so you know there's two versions basically but each one is kind of called the esp32 sf s2 f series you know i think as long as you're aware of these um it's fine so this is the esp32 s2 fn4 with flash and um PS RAM, and if you search for ESP32 S2 FH, um, you'll see that there's the FH2, two megabytes of flash, no PS RAM. The FH4, four megabytes of flash, also no PS RAM. And then the chip I wanted, the FN4 R2, which they have in stock, which is actually kind of impressive. Um, so uh, if you want to make a design, with uh built-in wi-fi and flash and ps ram it's pretty cheap these are like a dollar 75 and they're in stock and uh they're great for you know just picking place and the the component count necessary to get this running is really minimal you just need a couple passives 40 megahertz crystal you know antenna and uh you know good power supply if you could for the folks that are just getting started their engineering career what's uh ps ram oh ps ram is I think pseudo, pseudo static RAM. Um, it's it's basically you you have RAM on chip, usually, and that's you know most of the time whatever your microcontroller is has built in RAM. Like the at Mega three twenty eight using the Arduino Uno has two K. Um, the Sam D fifty one has one hundred ninety two K. But uh, if you want a massive amount of RAM, like two megabytes. Uh, there's sometimes a peripheral on the chip, and this is usually on high-end chips only, where you can attach an external SPI flash or QSPI flash chip, an 8-pin eight, eight chip, that'll give you slow but large amounts of RAM that the internal chip can address, and it thinks that it's, like, native. Is Very like, handy for IoT. Is this, like, back in the day when hard drives would have, like, a RAM disk? And it's like, it's like, oh, we're going to use your hard drive because we don't have enough RAM. It's, yeah, it's a little bit like a swap file, but it's not yeah. really, you're not using flash. It is RAM. It's real RAM. It's so just, it's, it's, it's just pseudo off RAM, chip. It's SPI, right? It's a way to get to this other storage memory with SPI. It's basically, if you just want, it, it's because it's handled, look, it's address, look, historically you have eight mega, eight bit or 16 bit addressed RAM. All chips did because there's no internal RAM. And this is weird because it's like there's internal RAM and there's external RAM and yeah. the PS RAM is just massive and slow and so it's good for it's not good for like you're running variables because in and in, in interrupts for example on the esp can't use ps ram you have to use data that's kept on chip but if you are like reading a json file from the yeah. internet and you want to parse it and the json file is like 400k no chip has 400k of, of ram and so you toss it over there you and put that, on the PS RAM. And that's why we like it, because CircuitPython, we're putting all sorts of data on there. We got images, we got yeah, it's JSON great files. For, yeah, it's great for internet stuff, because you can yeah. just slurp down the entire XML file and parse it. And because the internet's not designed for microcontrollers, people just stuff so much data in their JSON and XML files. You're, you know, so like nice. something like GitHub, you want to get stats for GitHub, you have to download 
like a massive file. It can be like 30K. <laughs> and on a computer, that's not massive. What's funny is but like... That's not that massive. Yeah, what's funny is like... 30k is massive for microtrivials, you know, and like for computers when you they go, consider it light. Well, for computers, you go to like any web page now, and it's like 300 megabytes because all this JavaScript is loaded. Yeah, that's yeah. like the like the, the index, you know. <laughs> yeah, is like here comes here comes a new framework. Okay. So so yes, yeah, so that's why I like the the built-in PSRAM, and um, thankfully it's now available. So I just picked some up. Okay, and, and you should too. And that's a great search.